I'm going to um, start with the bad news, I'm afraid. Um, there is a massive research, as I'm sure lots of you already know, about public awareness of infrastructure and its perceived value, and it really makes pretty depressing reading, I think, for a lot of us um, here today. Um, in the UK, there's very little understanding, actually, of what we do, so that some of you will know there's some um, research that was published late last year by the Copper Consultancy, working with the Institution of Civil Engineers, and it confirmed that 55% of quite a large data set have absolutely no idea what we do. Uh, it's just it's staggering, really, in the grand scheme of things. Um, more importantly, I suspect, they have no idea why we do it. <laughs> we do, when you think about it, you kind of go, well, what if we've, we've got this very wrong. Um, this figure, the 55%, actually goes up to 65% when you consider young people specifically. Um, and even more depressingly, if you ask that same group whether they could name one engineering or infrastructure-related project at all, 65% failed. <laughs> So when you put it in the context of all the projects we've been hearing about this morning and what's been going on and what's happening, whether we're looking at the um, transport for the southeast area or beyond and so on, actually, it makes you realise that a lot of this stuff just isn't on their radar at all. Um, I also just found myself wondering, as an aside earlier on, um, when we were doing the, the survey questions, whether a normal audience, if you like, that same audience of the general public, would have come up with the same list of priorities for transport for the southeast. Um, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't, really. I don't think that international gateway connectivity or business connectivity, that kind of thing, important as we all know it is, and I'm not suggesting it's not for a minute, if you, to, if you were to actually ask people out there what they thought, that's not what they'd be telling us about. So we need to figure out how we join those dots much more strongly. Um, so why is there such a difference? I guess, why is it that it feels so difficult to make the case for infrastructure investment sometimes? And why is it that while the general public will happily agree they quite like having a decent transport network, they like having water and waste networks, they quite like energy too, really, when it's sort of in the context of their own home and workplace, that kind of thing. Why is it that we take it all for granted, except when things go wrong, and why is it we don't make the link with infrastructure expertise and engineering and so on as one of the key skill sets that actually gives that to all of those people every day? This is where the U of the engineer comes in. So um, part of the problem, to me at least, is that our usual response to that kind of research is that we show our collective kind of utter outrage, if you like, to that 55%, by first of all continuing to provide a pretty solid but largely invisible set of infrastructure services to everybody. And secondly, we mutter to each other about their utterly unbelievable lack of appreciation for what it is we do. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? We've done it for a very long time. Um, so put simply, despite all this effort that's gone into public engagement, community outreach, schools and STEM activities and similar and so on, and it's not to put it down at all because it's really, really important, in reality we haven't made nearly enough of a dent as things stand right now. So this year, with the government-sponsored Year of Engineering, which is handily and entirely by plan matching up with the IC's 200th uh, birthday or anniversary, as you've been hearing, also a small matter of things like Crossrail opening and so on, it's, it's a big year in terms of what's going on in the engineering world and so on. This really does mark a serious effort to do things a bit differently. Is it worth doing? Um, the same research I was just talking about actually showed a bit of a chink of light, I suppose. 79% of that same audience asked did agree that investing in infrastructure was useful even if they didn't know what it was. They did agree it was useful. 60% thought they would be more interested if the, be if the benefits were better explained, and 57% want more public awareness programmes. They know that they want to know more, they just simply don't know how to engage, and we're not good enough at actually telling the right story and a coherent story and so on. Um, so I think in a nutshell, the public interest is there. We know the polit political interest is there, we've been hearing about that today. Um, so in the round, there is a massive opportunity sitting in front of us right now to start to do this all a lot better. So, um, very briefly, in terms of what's actually going on under some of that Year of Engineering and ICE 200 banners, um, Year of Engineering has an overarching goal, which is to do with encouraging more young people to choose engineering. In order to choose something, you have to know about it. So, it's a very, very big sort of awareness campaign at the heart of the whole thing. Um, as a key part of that, um, the ICE 200 programme is focused on reaching a much bigger public audience. So, stopping that thing around talking to ourselves and actually starting to reach out much more obviously and overtly. And secondly, explaining the difference that all of us actually make to the world around us. So, specific activities include some of the things like, and you may have participated in some of these or seen them happening, things like Cafe 200 under the ICE 200 banner. Um, nearly 50 events held so far this year, obviously lots of the year left to go, um, tapping into established networks and actually going to groups that, that already meet around the country and talking to them on their terms about actually what it is we do and why it matters. Um, one of the key lessons there is around simplicity. We don't need to go in with a really complicated thing. What we need to do is just go and explain the basics really, really well. 
Um, secondly, Pitch 200. This is a competition for um, ICE members trying to explain really complicated engineering concepts in no more than 200 seconds. Um, if you haven't seen any of those, if you weren't able to get to any of the events, there's lots of it on YouTube. So the Southeast Regional winner for this patch was Emma Watkins from Skanska. Um, and she basically, you can find her on YouTube with her bow and arrow, where she's explaining things around structural engineering and bridges. Um, there's a final stage coming at the end of the year where the six regional finalists from around the country will all um, take part in a competition against each other. Um, at the same time, there's 200 feature sort of stories, I guess, around key people and projects and so on coming out. They're being released in bundles through the year. Um, and finally, some of you will be aware, because hopefully you've been to it, there's an exhibition running at the ICE in Great George Street, which is around invisible superheroes, tapping into that exact message about the fact that what we do is so important, and yet most of the time is completely underappreciated. So for those of you, particularly those um, who have young kids to look after in school holidays, if you're looking for something to do in the weekdays, I'd highly recommend it, and so would my kids, in fact. <laughs> in fact, it's difficult to make them leave, if I'm honest. Um, so is all this effort actually working? Um, you could say I'm completely biased, and I suspect I am, but I would say yes, and there is some early evidence coming in now from the sort of first quarter or four months of the year and so on. Um, there were some targets set for ICE 200 in particular as part of this whole year of engineering bundle to reach an audience of around about, say, 10 million people in terms of the general members of the public, so going beyond the people in this room who already are kind of in the tent, if you like. Um, so far this year already, and bearing in mind that some of these figures are just for the first quarter, so end of March, we've already managed to reach 21 million through TV broadcasts, another 30-odd million through print nationals and regional press, um, lo loads more opportunities, millions more opportunities to see the information on social media, mainly LinkedIn and Twitter, so you can find information on there. Um, 80 of those 200 projects are now live as of the end of April, and, and people profiles and so on. Some of those are to do with looking back over as much as 200 years, some of those are beginning to look forward and so on as well. If you want to know about the front run on that, it's actually something to do with lizard lifeboats from Cornwall, where there's been nearly 5,000 views on YouTube to do with that particular activity. Um, and at that Superheroes exhibition I just mentioned, um, thousands, of, thousands of visitors so far. What's interesting there is that only a third of them are actually ICE members. So this isn't the ICE membership going to support its own activity. Two thirds of the visitors so far have actually been others, if you like. They've either seen it advertised you know, in various different places, whether it's in kids' magazines or whether it's in the press or whatever. They've actually seen it and they've chosen to go and engage with it, which is great. Um, so I guess against that original target, either it means we're completely useless at setting targets, which possibly is true, or it means that actually all of this is going quite well and we've managed to reach an audience in the tens of millions already and it's only obviously early May. This could actually be the beginning of something that starts to feel a bit different in terms of raising awareness and so on. Um, I guess the acid test is at the end of the year when we plan to repeat some of that awareness um, research and see whether or not we can actually see a visible difference. Obviously, these things are quite difficult to measure in practice, but trying to see if we can actually see an uptick in the, in the proportion of people out there in the wider world who will acknowledge they do understand a bit more about what we actually do. So to close, in terms of what this means for Transport for the Southeast and the future and so on, in terms of, I guess, what Transport for the Southeast might get from this, I think we have to assume that a fair number of those millions of people are probably based in this patch. And I think if we strike quickly, and the timing is important here, before people have sort of forgotten about it again, there's every opportunity to actually get out there and maybe use some of the early Transport for the Southeast engagement activities to build on some of this sort of thing and assume a certain level of knowledge and maybe backfill some of that if we find it's not actually there. Let's not waste all the work that's gone into it. Let's actually use it and carry people forward with us as we, as we go on. Um, I think... Um, we should also find, in terms of tapping into the big messages around social and economic benefit, the outcomes and so on, I think there's a lot to learn from that as well. Because, again, coming back to that point around how people really don't, they don't sort of relate to the specifics of the projects, but they can relate to the outcomes they actually want in terms of people and places and communities and connectivity and all that kind of thing. That bit works. And obviously that bit we have got coming through in all the strategic information and so on. But it's remembering that and then landing the projects within that context that's going to be so important. In terms of what you guys can do for the Year of Engineering and for RCE 200, obvious point really, support the local activities that are running for the rest of the year, suggest things, raise the profile, get involved, get stuck in and so on. Um, encourage other people to do the same, of course, as well. Um, and, and again, just remember that what we've got to do is focus on the outcomes and the so what. Why does it matter for all these people? Because if we don't get that bit right, we're going to find ourselves back in the same place in five years, ten years, and so on. So I think if we do it well, we can capitalise on that growing public and political interest in terms of actually getting the right things done, both in this patch and elsewhere. And looking ahead, we need to think about how we deal with change and the future and technology and so on. And does that need to change that message or not? I guess we'll come on to that in, in one of the next sessions this afternoon. And secondly, of course, keeping it alive. We can't expect to fix this in a year. 
It's not realistic. We're never going to manage to do that. But I think with a bit of sustained effort over the few years to come, we could actually start to see that at last we start to actually change the, the dial, if you like, in terms of actually where we land and, and the extent to which we're actually appreciated in a more visible sense. Um, and finally, I guess feeling a need to just mention bananas one more time after this morning's sessions. I suspect our ultimate goal, if we really, really get it right, is to make sure that the vast majority of people out there who could probably identify the banana and many other types of fruit as well, um, might also have some small appreciation of the magic of the transport, the energy, the water, etc., and the rest of the infrastructure that actually helps th those bananas, etc., to actually get onto their supermarket shelves. Thank you. Thank you very much.